Welcome to Ground Control RC. We are going to be replacing a JST connector on this 3-cell LiPo to an XT30 connector because this is going to go on one of my mini park jets which is set up with an XT30 connector and because this is an 800 milliamp 25C battery and it's capable of providing 20 amps of power continuous this is an insufficient type of connector for this battery. I do not know why manufacturers do this. But anyway, I'm not going to go into all the specifications and reasons why I standardize on specific battery connectors. There's a, I'll put a link to a video that we produced a while back on standardizing your battery connectors and why I have standardized on specific battery connectors. But anyway, we are going to be removing this JST connector and we are going to be installing an XT30 connector. And the XT30 connector, you want to, you want, when you solder these, you want to make sure that you've got both pairs put together because this plastic will warp if it gets too hot, which means your pins will not be straight. So we've got the battery, we want the battery end of the connector facing us. And I'm going to put these two, um, mating connectors together to keep these pins straight while I am soldering them. I've got a pair of side cuts here I'm going to use to to uh, cut the power leads on this battery. I'm only going to do one at a time. Um, if you attempt to do this type of work, you do so at your own risk. I highly suggest if you do attempt this that you cut one wire at a time, leave the other one in the old connector until you're ready to solder that one and make sure that you do not cut across both wires at one time. So I've got my 6040 leaded solder here. It's 1.6 millimeters in diameter and I've got a couple of pieces of heat shrink here. So I've got my soldering iron uh, heating up. I've got a little thing of flux here. I have my uh, solder station with my helping hands and I have a uh, moistened a sponge to clean the tip of my soldering iron. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take my side cuts and I'm going to cut the power lead. I'm going to flip this over. The positive side on this connector is on this flat portion of the connector and the negative side is on the rounded uh, bullnose portion of the connector. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my hot wire from this connector. I guess I need a new, new set of side cuts. Okay, and then I'm going to get a, an X-Acto knife and I'm going to skin the insulation back on that just a little bit. And we want to take off about three or four millimeters of insulation here. There we go. And then I'm going to twist the end of this wire and I am going to tin it up a little bit first. So let's see. Our soldering iron, let me get my in. Let's see if we're hot. We're hot. I'm going to tin up my tip a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and lay down some solder in my connector here, real quick. I'm just going to lay it in there. Let me see if I can bring this in a little bit closer so you can see it. I'm just going to lay the solder in there. Okay, and while I've got the soldering iron hot, I'm going to go ahead and flip the connector over and put another little bit of solder inside the other channel. There we go. It's that quick. I'm going to take my wire here and I'm going to just poke it into the flux just to get a little flux on the wire and I'm just going to put a little bit of solder on the tip of the wire that'll help transfer the heat okay now one thing that we don't want to forget to do is we don't want to forget to take our heat shrink and put that over top of our wire before we solder it to our connector we're going to have to desolder so now I need to flip my connector back over to the plus side of the wire and I am going to heat this solder back up and 
Okay, so we have one wire soldered onto our connector. And I'm just going to take this piece of heat shrink and I'm going to push it down over the connector to make sure I don't short against it. I'm going to go ahead and cut off the other side of this connector. For my ground wire. Yeah, I definitely need another set of side cuts. There we go. I'm going to skin three or four millimeters of the wire. Okay, once again, we want to twist the end of the wire together. Okay. I want to put a little bit of flux on it just by dipping the wire into the can of flux. And then I want to just tin it up just a little bit. I hope I've got this in shot. Let's bring this down a little bit. Yeah, I think you can see that. Just to help transfer the heat. Okay, now we want to take our other piece of heat shrink, slip that over top of our wire. And you want to make sure you get as much that you get this prep work done ahead of time so you're not having to stop and do it while you're soldering. Okay, now we are ready to solder our other lead onto our pin on our XT30. Okay, now we've got that soldered. Let's clean our tip again. Always make sure that you clean your tip constantly. Okay, I'm going to push my heat shrink back over the top. Okay, now I've got that connector. It should be cooled down enough. It should be cooled down enough now that I've got both wires in there soldered in there, both pieces of heat shrink pushed up. And you want to make sure that you get your heat shrink push all the way up to where that that uh, plastic casing butts against the internal pin there. Okay, we want to make sure there's no chance of that getting shorted out. So now what I am going to do is I'm going to unplug my soldering iron. Okay, so I've got my heat gun plugged in. So now what we're going to do, and this is a high temperature heat gun. It has two settings, high and low. I'm going to put it on high, and then what I'm going to do is I am going to shrink these. Let me get this cord out of the way so you can see what I'm doing here. So now I'm just going to put some heat to the heat shrink, shrink it around the wires, and our job will be complete. Just make sure that you rotate your wires around on the side, top, bottom, make sure that you've got it, the heat shrink good and tight around the wires. Now we're insulated. And now we are ready to use this battery with our park jet. So there you go, there's a, there's a tutorial on how to replace the uh, JST connector that you have on your battery or whatever, whatever type of connector you have on your battery to a different type of connector, in this case an XT30, how to solder it to the XT30 connector, how to shrink your heat shrink. Um, it's all pretty straightforward and like anything it just takes a little bit of practice. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please give a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to check out our Patreon site because we have a lot of free content there as well. Don't forget that there will be a link to one of our videos explaining good reasons why you should standardize connectors on your aircraft, your vehicles, and your batteries, and, and why I have chosen the connectors that I have chosen to standardize on. So thanks much, and we will see you in the air.